All right. Um, in the last lectures, we discussed one application of the method of regions and the large mass expansion of loop diagrams to G minus two of the muon. And we particularly focused on electroweak diagrams where we have a heavy particle, either the Higgs, W or the Z, and a light particle like the muon in the loop. And the large mass expansion separates the loop integral into single scale integrals, which either depend only on the heavy scale or on the light scale. And in this way, we get a very nice understanding of the kind of contributions which appear in the final result. And in particular, with quite simple means, we obtained three important results. Namely, uh, first of all, in the W boson case, there is no logarithmic enhancement. In the Higgs boson case, there is a logarithmic enhancement. And in the Z boson case, there accidentally is also no logarithmic enhancement. In the W case, we didn't need any calculation because we saw the result just by looking at the diagrams after the large mass expansion, which were scaleless integrals, therefore zero, and therefore couldn't uh, produce a large logarithm. In the Z boson case, it uh, arose from a kind of accidental cancellation, and in the Higgs case, the natural thing appeared, namely in the large mass expansion, we get a sum of two diagrams, each of which can in principle be non-zero and is also non-zero in this case. And uh, each diagram produces a logarithmic uh, term, which combines to a physical logarithmic enhancement. And uh, the last thing that we did was to summarize all of the results. And we finished with a summary of the Higgs case. Let us now just finish also a summary of the Z boson case. So the diagram with a virtual Z for G minus two looks like this. And applying the method of regions produces two diagrams. One diagram looks like this, where uh, the heavy line is uh, taken in isolation, Taylor expanded, and uh, which produces an effective vertex. The effective vertex is inserted into the diagram, and then we get a diagram which has this shape in the method of regions. This corresponds to the soft region of the momentum expansion. And the second diagram is simply a Taylor expansion of the full diagram with respect to the external scales. And uh, this produces an effective theory vertex, which is a polynomial in the external momenta and the small masses of this diagram. This produces a non-analytic term in the light scale. And uh, so uh, from the combination, we understand the emergence of the logarithmic enhancement. OK. So uh, and let's just summarize the results. From our calculation, we obtained that g minus 2 or a mu from the soft part is given by 4 cv square minus 4 ca square divided by 16 pi square times the muon mass square divided by the z mass square. Uh, so all of this is suppressed by two powers of the small mass ratio. But here, since uh, the divergence accidentally adds up to 0, we have no 1 over epsilon, and therefore we have no logarithm. And so let's write this down, maybe. So in principle, uh, if there would be a 1 over epsilon pole, it would have to be accompanied with ln mu square divided by the muon mass square. But um, there is no 1 over epsilon, and therefore there is no log. Then we also did the hard calculation, a mu hard. And even before the calculation, we knew after this result that the hard calculation also has to be finite. Otherwise, the full uh, expansion would be inconsistent. And the explicit calculation shows that, indeed, it is finite. And uh, the result is 2 cv squared plus 
two CA square divided by 16 pi square times the same mass suppression times a prefactorial minus four over three. And again, accidentally, there is no one over epsilon. And in this case, if there would be a one over epsilon pole in the method of regions, it would have to be an infrared divergence because the diagram um, compared to the original one has a modified infrared behavior, but the same ultraviolet behavior as a uh, constructional outcome of the method of regions. So the original diagram is UV finite. Therefore, this is also UV finite, but it can become infrared divergent. And, uh, but accidentally, there is no such divergence because of consistency. Um, so, and uh, therefore, there is again no ln mu square divided by the set mass square. And so if we then combine it, then we obtain a full result, which is a mu from the set boson in uh, the standard model is given by the mass suppression m mu square divided by the set mass square times the sum of the two terms. And uh, let me just immediately sum up. So you get uh, here 8 over 3 minus 4 and so on. And here you get minus 4 minus 8 over 3. And just combining it gives the following. In the denominator, we can write 4 pi square. And in the numerator, we can write 1 over 3 CV square minus 5 over 3 CA square. That is the final result. And again, I stress there is no ln mz square divided by mu square enhancement. So and numerically, um, like the W boson diagram, uh, the z and the W are of the same order of magnitude. Both are mass suppressed and otherwise are proportional to the typical 1 over 16 pi square times a numerical prefactor times coupling constants. And the coupling constants are gauge couplings. These are the electroweak gauge couplings, G1, G2, from the SU2 cross U1 gauge group. And uh, so CV and CA are some combinations of the two gauge couplings. And in the W, you have the same kind of expression. There is, in both cases, no logarithmic enhancement. And if you then simply uh, look at the orders of magnitude, then it behaves like mu on mass square divided by the weak masses square times the electroweak gauge couplings divided by something like 8 pi square. So uh, this is, as we already said, 10 to the minus 6. And this is about 10 to the minus 3. So overall, this is 10 to the minus 9. And that is, uh, if you plug in the numbers exactly, then this is correct. But you see that immediately uh, a simple estimate, just based on knowing that there are gauge couplings, mass suppression, and no log enhancement, gives you the correct order of magnitude, which is important to know. And if there would have been a log enhancement, it would be larger by one or two orders of magnitude which is, of course, uh, also, again, important to know. All right, so this finishes our um, application of the method of regions to a very important physical case, namely G minus 2 electroweak contributions, where we see how the method of regions works out. The divergences uh, appear in intermediate steps. They are accompanied with logarithms. Um, logarithms of mu square, which are unphysical, but cancel in the end, just like the one over epsilon poles also cancel. And uh, in, at least in the W case in particular, we get a dramatic simplification of the analysis by applying the method of regions. OK, uh, do you have any questions to the G minus 2 application? We have one second application, which is much shorter, uh, which we already discussed in the exercise, namely 
the QED with a heavy muon, where we integrate out the muon and derive a light effective theory without muon. We did the appropriate calculation already in the exercise, and let me just summarize the findings of that exercise and also compare it to the method of regions. So this is an application to QED with a heavy muon. And uh, of course, this corresponds to uh, an exercise sheet we had last week. The appropriate Feynman diagram that we needed to calculate is this one. This is essentially the only Feynman diagram where the heavy muon appears. If we look at processes with light particles, electrons, or photons as external states, the only other diagrams would be loops with a muon, but more photons attached to it, like four photon, six photon, and so on. But they would be a stronger mass suppressed with one over the muon mass to higher powers. So let us neglect them today. Let's only look at the contribution of this diagram. And uh, uh, it can be written as follows, minus i g mu nu q square minus q mu q nu times the so-called vacuum polarization, pi gamma uh, of Q square. And the result of pi gamma of Q square uh, can be expanded in a Taylor series in small Q square. And uh, it looks like this, E square over 12 pi square times 1 over epsilon minus ln muon mass square divided by mu square um, plus Q square over 5 mu square plus higher orders. Higher orders in the ratio q square over the muon mass square. So here in this case, we see that the result as a function of the momentum q square is analytic. So we have a Taylor expansion here. That is the zeroth order, q square to the zero. Here first order, and there would be second order and higher orders. So in this case, um, the result is analytic. in the small variable q square at q square going to zero, and which in particular means that there is no ln q square. In principle, there could be something like ln q square over the muon mass square or ln q square divided by the mass mu square, uh, the, the regularization scale mu square, but these logarithms do not appear. Instead, we have an analytic dependence at q square going to zero. Analytic means that uh, we can expand it as a Taylor expansion, and the Taylor expansion converges against the true result. Let us look at the diagram from the point of view of large mass expansion or method of regions. And let's, in this case, uh, use the large mass expansion way of looking at it, which is, of course, equivalent. So we look at the case where q or q mu goes to zero, or equivalently the muon mass uh, goes to infinity. Then this diagram, according to the large mass expansion, becomes the following. We have to do a sum over a set of subgraphs g, and for each subgraph we take the amplitude f of the full graph divided by g times the Taylor expansion of the subgraph g with respect to the external small variables going into the subgraph g. So uh, without repeating all of these uh, definitions of the subgraph, but the point is, what were the conditions on the subgraphs? How many subgraphs do we need to sum over in this particular case? So you now have to remember what the large mass expansion algorithm requires uh, about the properties of the subgraphs we should sum over. Any ideas? Yeah? They should contain all heavy lines, indeed. And uh, what is the implication here? Which one? Basically the entire diagram. The entire diagram, right. 
uh, just to be clear, was there some additional requirement on the subgraph as well, beyond containing all heavy lines? Yes, indeed. And uh, okay, so there is no question about this here, but uh, let's write this down, must contain all heavy lines. And therefore, there is just one term in the summation, namely the graph itself. So the result is this. So literally, the large mass expansion tells us that the expansion of this diagram is the Taylor expansion of itself, which uh, tells us directly the result. So uh, the large mass expansion here in the special case means simply exactly the statement that we can Taylor expand the entire graph into its external momentum. And that is exactly what we observed from the explicit result. Or maybe let's put this here. This shows that the diagram is analytic and can be Taylor expanded in Q square around Q square equals zero. And in terms of effective field theory, it has the following interpretation. If we say that the diagram can be Taylor expanded, uh, in an EFT, we would truncate the Taylor expansion at some finite order that we are, um, let's say, happy with. And if we truncate the Taylor expansion at some finite order, we get a polynomial in the external momentum. And a polynomial in the external momentum can be written as a local Feynman rule of an EFT. So therefore, what it means is that the diagram can be expressed as a local Feynman rule of some effective field theory Lagrangian. So that is the literal result. And which Feynman rule? For example, this one. So the um, first non-vanishing order is already a polynomial of second degree with this uh, combination g mu q square minus q mu q nu times a constant. That would be the lowest order, uh, no, lowest non-vanishing order contribution. So it would correspond to a Lagrangian with two derivatives because it's second order in the momentum. And the next non-vanishing order is, contains q to the fourth power, would correspond to a Lagrangian term with four derivatives acting on some combination of two photon field operators. But anyway, uh, this is the clear result that even if we go to higher orders, we can express the diagram as a local EFT Feynman rule. That is all I want to say uh, to this here. So such that you see that indeed the method of regents explains uh, this basic observation. So here the method of regents is actually much simpler to apply than in the G minus two case because there is only heavy lines in the diagram such that we have only one term in the sum and we do not need to separate into soft plus hard contributions. There only is the hard contribution. Okay, any questions to this um, or to the entire chapter on large mass expansion and the method of regents? before we go on to another chapter of the lecture. All right. Now we will apply everything we have achieved to discuss effective field theories at the loop level. 
and very clearly the method of regions, as we have discussed it before, provides the technical basis and it essentially makes it obvious that effective field theories at the loop level exist and how we can obtain them and how we can deal with them and what are their properties. Therefore, let us begin simply with writing down statements on effective field theories uh, and uh, their validity at the loop level just by obvious uh, conclusions from uh, the previous discussions. So I will summarize a few statements which are mostly obvious but important. So from the previous sections, we obtain the following. So let us suppose that a full quantum field theory is defined by some Lagrangian and uh, technically we use a bare Lagrangian which contains the uh, renormalized parameters plus the renormalization constants which cancel divergences and uh, provide specific finite parts and we discussed that ultimately the final result of green functions only depends on the bare Lagrangian but it, the bare Lagrangian can be split into finite and divergent parts in different ways corresponding to different renormalization schemes but the result really only depends on this. So let us say a full quantum field theory is defined by a Lagrangian with light and heavy fields and the heavy fields have a mass proportional to some heavy scale capital M. Such a quantum field theory can be systematically approximated by an EFT which is described by a Lagrangian LEFT also in general a bare Lagrangian which does not contain the heavy fields but which contains only uh, light um, relevant degrees of freedom. So now um, some properties. The EFT provides a systematic approximation in powers of the ratio of energy scales So the energy scales are the external momenta, Pi of uh, light particles, the light masses and uh, the heavy masses of the heavy particles and we treat all the external momenta and all the light masses as light and of the same order of magnitude and all the heavy masses are also treated of the heavy uh, of the same order of magnitude and this general ratio goes to zero. And then we have a systematic expansion in powers of this ratio. So the Lagrangian of the EFT is local. That is what we have always seen in the examples and it is systematically an outcome of the method of regions that we always get a local effective theory vertices so therefore the Lagrangian is local but it contains higher dimensional operators so in general operators with dimension bigger than four again because our uh, method of regions um, does not uh, lead to any restriction on the dimensionality of the vertices which appear So and the interpretation is that these higher dimensional operators 
um, of encapsulate the non-local contribution of the heavy states. Like we just saw in the case of the muon loop to the photon self-energy, the muon is actually a non-local um, line in the Feynman diagram, but we can approximate the result of the diagram by a polynomial in the external momenta, which gives rise to local uh, contributions in the EFT Lagrangian, but uh, it describes the non-local circling around of the muon. So we can say this describes the non-local effects of virtual heavy states. Then, let us specifically um, focus on using dimensional regularization, where we have the method of regions, or equivalently, the large mass expansion. Here we have, on the one hand, soft integrals, Soft integrals are the ones where the light lines are explicitly uh, still contained in the loop, but the heavy lines are replaced by local vertices. And these correspond to effective field theory loop diagrams. For example, so these were diagrams that looked like this. In the case of G minus two, for example, a heavy Z boson is contracted to a point, giving a local vertex, but the light uh, particle remains explicitly in the loop. So this is a loop diagram in the EFT using an EFT vertex coming from integrating out one heavy state. So, and this corresponds to the soft integrals. On the other hand, the hard integrals They uh, contribute EFT local um, vertices, such as this one um, when we integrate out or uh, look at the hard part of the G minus 2 loop diagram, where we assume that the momentum in the muon line is also heavy, and therefore the entire loop can be contracted to a point. So we see that uh, single diagrams in the full theory um, are split into different contributions from the EFT, such loop diagrams and uh, three-level diagrams. And of course, something similar but more complicated happens at the multi-loop level, where there are um, interplay between soft and hard uh, integrals, because we have several loops. Then from this discussion, we can also draw a little bit more detailed uh, consequences. So we can say the EFT has the same infrared behavior as the full theory. IR stands for infrared behavior as the full theory. So infrared means uh, low energy, so the EFT has the same low energy behavior as the full theory. And you can see it in, in this way. So in the soft integral, uh, we assume the momentum in the loop is small. And uh, for the small momentum region in the loop, the integrand was not changed. Therefore, the region where the loop momentum is small is identical in the full theory diagrams and the EFT diagrams. That is the meaning behind saying the infrared behavior is the same. But the ultraviolet behavior is different. So for large momenta, 
uh, this diagram, the integrand behaves very differently from, um, from the full theory diagram. And in fact, as we discussed a lot uh, in the G minus two context, for example, the original full theory diagram is ultraviolet finite, but this diagram is maybe ultraviolet divergent. So the ultraviolet behavior is modified strongly. And therefore, the modified behavior of this is of course then compensated by the additional diagram here. So instead of one ultraviolet finite Feynman diagram, we have now two, one which is divergent, another one which is a tree level vertex, which must also be divergent and the divergencies cancel. But this is of course an illustration of the fact that the ultraviolet behavior is different in the two theories. But the infrared behavior is the same. And actually, uh, this statement um, maybe hopefully reminds you of something that I said last semester in the other lecture, in the uh, theory master lecture, where we also discussed effective field theories a little bit in a broader context, for example, in the context of Ginzburg-Landau description of the superconductor. And there we said exactly the same thing, um, applied, for example, to phase transitions. Phase transitions are obviously a long range or infrared phenomenon. And the EFT contains the same infrared behavior as the full theory, which means in the case of Ginzburg-Landau, when you derive Ginzburg-Landau theory as a low energy effective field theory approximation to some maybe unknown uh, fundamental theory of a superconductor, the phase transitions and phase um, diagram would be the same in the EFT as it is in the fundamental theory. So you can study interesting things like phase diagrams in the EFT instead of in the full theory. So let's write this also down, even in a broader context. For example, phase transitions. Uh, Etc. cetera can be described in the EFT. And so the description would be equivalent to the description in the full theory. Then, so the ultraviolet behavior is different and uh, we already saw it here, namely the effect of non-local interactions of heavy states is described now by local Feynman rules. So let's make this a little bit more explicit, the high energy dynamics of the full theory is absorbed or encapsulated in simply the coefficients of a local Lagrangian in low energy EFT local couplings. And one um, particular aspect of this is um, often very important namely symmetries. So far in our semester, we didn't discuss much about symmetries, but symmetries are obviously very important parts of the definition of many quantum field theories like the standard model or QED. And uh, depending on what are the relevant heavy scales in your problem or the light scales in your problem, the EFT might have a different symmetry than the fundamental theory, like non-relativistic versus relativistic or non-SU2 invariant versus SU2 invariant. If you integrate out, for example, the W and the Z, but retain the photon, the low energy EFT is only a U1 gauge invariant, while the fundamental theory is SU2 cross U1 gauge invariant. So the symmetry pattern can change, which means that the local coupling constants in the EFT Lagrangian uh, respect a different symmetry than the couplings in the original Lagrangian. So that can happen depending on what you integrate out. So can have an impact on the validity of symmetries.
then finally, what is actually now the correspondence between the EFT and the full theory? In the most detailed form, uh, which quantities are approximated when we say the theory can be approximated? What are actually the mathematical building blocks or physical quantities which are approximated? It is Feynman diagrams or green functions, and our method of regents discussion shows us which Feynman diagrams can be identified with which. Namely, in the um, full theory, let's say we can start with full and one light particle irreducible diagrams with only light external lines with small external momenta. And the diagrams should be one particle irreducible with respect to the light lines. Then these are the diagrams which become equal to EFT diagrams, which are simply one particle irreducible. In the EFT there are only light lines, and so that is the same as one light particle irreducible. But uh, our method of regions shows us that we can definitely arrange uh, the EFT such that really the sum of all one particle light particle irreducible diagrams becomes equal to the sum of the one particle irreducible diagrams in the EFT. That is the most detailed equality that we can achieve. So the EFT can be chosen such that this holds are equal up to powers of the suppression scale pi or mi divided by the capital mi. So we can uh, achieve an equality up to any desired order, but I mean in the EFT we will always truncate um, at some particular order and then we can achieve the equality up to this order that we have decided uh, to use. Okay, so this is the basis and uh, in principle I would say everything should be kind of obvious from the examples and from the discussion that we have had so far. Um, if you have any question we can discuss it, but of course we will now do some illustrations of it. Um, one thing is that in uh, our discussion indeed um, the theory will remain relativistic since we um, integrate out heavy particles um, with um, and uh, the light momenta are light and with respect to all their components therefore there is no way to change the relativistic symmetry and uh, so a non-relativistic limit would uh, correspond to a slightly different um, let's say expansion. But um, otherwise, we cannot say much in general. In, um, many symmetries are related uh, or make predictions on mass relations. For example, um, if a symmetry is unbroken, then typically it implies that several particles or several fields have the same mass. And then obviously, um, if the symmetry is intact, uh, we cannot uh, keep one mass light and the other one heavy because that would immediately violate the symmetry already in the full theory. So um, very frequently when uh, symmetry patterns are important, we have in the original theory somehow a broken symmetry. 
it can be spontaneously broken or explicitly broken. Uh, but then um, we have maybe a mass splitting of particles which are nevertheless related somehow by symmetries. And then we can look at the limit where this mass splitting becomes big. And then the fundamental symmetry pattern will change. And the examples I gave you are exactly of this kind. Like in the standard model, we have spontaneous electroweak symmetry breaking. Um, so we have fundamentally a symmetry as U2 cross U1, but because of the spontaneous breaking, there is a mass gap between the WZ and the photon. And we can look at the limit where the W and Z masses go to infinity while the photon remains massless. And then we will obtain an EFT, which is really um, a different gauge theory with a different gauge invariance. And we have in the EFT, we see no trace of the SU2 cross U1 gauge invariance because the heavy particles have gone to infinity. Another case is supersymmetry, where there is often something called explicit breaking, so-called soft SUSY breaking, where particles which should have the same mass as a result of supersymmetry actually have different masses, because we have written down explicit mass terms which uh, break the mass equality. And then again, if we look at the limit where this mass splitting goes to infinity, um, in the low energy EFT, there is no trace anymore of supersymmetry. So very often, uh, the change of a symmetry pattern is associated with some symmetry breaking, spontaneous or explicit, in the fundamental theory. And the interesting difference is that, I mean, the symmetry was broken initially, but it was broken in a different way. Spontaneous breaking is different from saying that there is no symmetry at all. Similarly, soft SUSY breaking is different from saying there is no supersymmetry at all in the theory. Um, in particular, in the Lagrangian, spontaneous and also soft SUSY breaking means that the operators corresponding to the breaking are dimension three or two, but not dimension four. But in both of these cases, in the low energy EFT, the symmetry breaking would be given by dimension four operators. So this is a change that can appear, and this is maybe the most frequent uh, pattern of um, the change of symmetries. Yep. So basically, when we introduced the method, method of regions, we said that uh, about some exact equalities of the original diagram. So uh, in this case, can we say that basically, OK, we neglect the diagrams to be some heavy particles, obviously? We have to, yes, by construction. And, and we neglect some higher orders in the um, momentum expansion of the method of regions with some integrals there. Right? We, we use only cut power power series and Q squared. Um, do we do any other approximations here? Or is it already everything? Do you have something specific in mind? I think we do not do any other approximation. So we only do the approximation that uh, this ratio becomes small. And um, I mean, it's part of the construction principle and our physical uh, assumption that um, our momenta of interest are small. And therefore, only light particles can be created in our processes. So, OK. So maybe I should say this a little bit more explicitly. Um, it's not written on the blackboard, but of course we um, do all of this uh, with a certain intention. Namely, we have the intention of describing low energy physics of some fundamental theory. And we are only interested in low energy physics. That means we are only interested in small momenta and only interested in light external particles. That is our intention. If we have a different intention, we need to derive a different approach. Okay? But that is our intention in this particular case. And for this, uh, our statement applies. And actually, of course, um, in the literature um, and in physics in general, uh, you might very well be interested in other limits. Of course, for example, you might be interested in the limits of very large energies and heavy external particles uh, where maybe the light uh, masses go to zero and you might want to look at this limit. 
um, heavy energy or large energy, but uh, making the small masses go to zero. That is just a different kind of limiting procedure. Or as we said, non-relativistic limit and so on. So there are different kinds of limits that you might be interested in. But what we discuss applies mostly to this particular case. Okay. Good. Then let us now look at some details. And let us begin with a topic we have already discussed, namely redundancy and the simplification of the effective field theory. We have looked at this and studied it at three level, um, but the discussion is uh, not different if we have the EFT at the loop level because that is a discussion which only applies within the EFT itself. Therefore, it is irrelevant whether the EFT came from tree-level matching or from loop-level matching. It's just a statement within the EFT. Therefore, we recap the statement as in section one. We can use field redefinitions including nonlinear field redefinitions to modify the EFT Lagrangian. Without changing physics. Basically, because in the path integral, we can do a variable substitution of the field variables. And uh, the path integral is invariant under the variable substitution and therefore different Lagrangians, which differ by field parametrizations, describe the same physics. However, they do not describe the same green functions because the green functions are directly associated with the actual fields. But the green functions are not directly measurable. Therefore, this literal uh, most detailed statement applies only if we do not modify the Lagrangian by field redefinitions. But if you do not care about this detailed equality, but only about physical equality, then of course you are free to do field redefinitions. And in this way, the Lagrangian can become simpler. So then only physical S matrix elements or similar quantities are equal between the full and effective field theory while off-shell green functions differ. So there is a very important, or let's say important for us and you at least, uh, application of this idea, uh, which you should um, feel the need for, uh, for consistency. Uh, and that is the QED matching with the heavy muon that we just discussed 20 minutes ago and that we also discussed in the exercise because there is a discrepancy between what we discussed in the exercise and what we discussed 20 minutes ago. So let us look at this discrepancy. For example, QED with heavy mu one So 20 minutes ago, we just discussed that in the full theory, we have a one light um, particle irreducible Feynman diagram 
with a heavy muon, which is this photon self-energy. We have also seen just 20 minutes ago that uh, we can describe this by an EFT, one particle irreducible diagram, namely by this Feynman diagram here, which is a local EFT vertex, because that diagram can be Taylor expanded and therefore it can be expressed as a local EFT vertex. Uh, just to be clear, what was the Feynman rule? It was minus I G mu nu Q square minus Q mu Q nu times, let's uh, say, um, uh, let us call it delta zeta, where delta zeta is given by E square over 12 pi square times 1 over epsilon minus ln m mu square divided by mu square plus higher order terms, but uh, let's ignore them for now. Also in the exercise, we ignored the higher order terms. We only use the photon self energy uh, exactly at the point Q square equal to zero. And uh, therefore, uh, we now only take this constant Q square independent part of the photon vacuum polarization. And then this local Feynman rule is still a polynomial of second degree in Q with some prefactor, which I write as delta zeta, which is this constant here. Okay, so that is what we just discussed. So the full diagram is equal in the approximation to the EFT Feynman diagram like this. And uh, that is the most detailed agreement that we can obtain between the full theory and the EFT as we discussed. But is this really what we did in the exercise? Please uh, try to remember what we did in the exercise. What was the outcome of the exercise and what was the discussion that we did at the time? Did we talk about such a diagram? Uh, no, we didn't. But what, uh, we did something else. W uh, does anybody remember what we did? In the discussion where we integrated out the muon, we derived a physical consequence on some other quantity. The coupling constant. So we derive the consequence on the coupling constant. And what did we use in order to derive that consequence? We used a requirement that something should be equal in the full and the EFT. And what did we look at? What should become equal? Right. For a physical process for E plus E minus to E plus E minus scattering. So we looked at a scattering process with electrons which is really something physical and not just as this photon self energy. And then we could derive a consequence on the coupling. So let us see the connection because that corresponds exactly to such a difference uh, corresponding to a field redefinition in the EFT. So, but anyway, so this is what we can really derive and it is literally true. And it is the mo best thing that we can do uh, for this EFT. Let's write down what this means as an equation. So here you would say that the EFT bear Lagrangian um, is the full theory bear without the muon minus this vertex. And this vertex is described by minus 1 over 4 f mu nu f mu nu times exactly this quantity delta zeta. So if you derive the Feynman rule from f mu nu f mu nu, you get exactly this prefactor. And uh, that is multiplied now by this quantity delta zeta. So uh, just also to mention this often, this is called the threshold correction. threshold correction because we have a term in the original Lagrangian, uh, f mu f mu, and the coefficient of the term is changed by this additional delta zeta um, when we go below the muon threshold. So 
the idea that is why we call it threshold correction. So there is a muon threshold. We go down with the energy, go down, 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 and then suddenly we are below the muon. We integrate out the muon, so we have passed below a threshold, and below the threshold we get this additional coefficient in front of a term which already exists. So this changes the term um, minus 1 over 4. So in principle, there is already 1 plus delta ZA in the Bayer Lagrangian, F mu nu, F mu nu, 2 minus 1 over 4, 1 plus delta ZA plus delta zeta, F mu nu, F mu nu. Okay, but anyway, this is our EFT Lagrangian, which provides the most detailed agreement between the EFT and the full theory. And now, we can uh, translate this result into the result of the exercise by doing a field redefinition. So we do a field redefinition, uh, namely what should we do? In the EFT, we do a mu. Um, basically, we absorb the delta zeta by redefining the photon field. So a mu becomes 1 over square root of 1 plus delta zeta times a mu, such that uh, in f mu nu, f mu nu, uh, this appears squared, so we divide this by 1 plus delta zeta, and then at first order the delta zeta simply drops out. So that means that, uh, okay, so here the delta zeta simply drops out, but in a covariant derivative, for example, of the electron field, we now get uh, the following normal derivative plus I E Q A mu. Um, this is what we normally have, but now we get instead of this one divided by square root of one plus delta zeta times the electron field. And in order to generate a usual form of the covariant derivative again, we can absorb uh, the one plus delta zeta in the charge in the uh, coupling constant E. So therefore, we can say that the bare EFT Lagrangian after this replacement becomes <laughs> so previously it was the full theory without muon minus this term now it, uh, the term is basically cancelled by the field renormalization, so this, it doesn't exist anymore. And instead, what has changed is that the coupling constant is replaced by E divided by the square root of 1 plus delta zeta. So we have the full theory without the muon, but with the replacement E goes to E1, which is given by E divided by a square root of 1 plus delta zeta which is approximated as E times 1 minus delta zeta over 2. And then you see that this is exactly the result of the exercise. Namely, the coupling constant changed by the value of the vacuum polarization at Q square equals 0, which is exactly what we see here. Okay, So we have indeed constructively obtained the result of the exercise now by first matching the EFT in detail to every single Feynman diagram in the full theory, then doing this field redefinition and uh, obtained a change in the coupling constant. And the coupling constant change is then really the physical um, effect of integrating out the muon. So it's easier to see the physical meaning of integrating out the coupling, uh, the muon, uh, in this way than it is in the other way. So 
So this makes transparent the main physical impact. Integrating out the muon. Agreed? Any comments? So as you see, here in this case, we didn't even need a nonlinear field redefinition. A linear field redefinition with a factor was sufficient. But nevertheless, this is one of the cases where you see that redefining your fields makes more transparent the physical meaning of uh, the EFT Lagrangian. But of course, in this way, indeed, um, we do not have agreement anymore for the photon self-energy, but we only have agreement for the physical scattering processes like E plus E minus to E plus E minus, which is what we started with in the exercise. OK, um, some other details. Bayer versus renormalized. You might wonder why I have now always written explicitly the Bayer Lagrangian instead of simply the Lagrangian or even the renormalized Lagrangian. But it shouldn't be uh, such a surprise because the method of regents changes the divergences and we want agreement between full green functions including everything. That means, of course, including counter terms because ultimately the green functions are only defined after including counter terms. That is why, if anything, the, in the EFT we must um, construct a bare Lagrangian which contains renormalized quantities and also counter terms. And uh, the divergences change, which means the counterterm Lagrangian also changes. We get additional divergent contributions in it explicitly as an outcome of the method of regions. So, but let's make this a little bit explicit. So, let me write down some illustrations. In the full theory, um, that should become equal to an EFT. And uh, as I said, the equality should hold including divergences and renormalization. It should simply hold for the sum of all Feynman diagrams, and in general, there are counter term Feynman diagrams. So this is determined. by the Bayer Lagrangian in the full theory. And this is obviously determined by the Bayer Lagrangian in the EFT. And for this very simple reason, of course, we need to construct the Bayer Lagrangian. Any question? No. But let me, uh, as I said, illustrate this a little bit by going back to the method of regions, let's say, given interpretation of the divergences, or more maybe an illustration with an example. So let us look again at the example of uh, g minus 2 or at least similar to G minus 2. In general, we would have a self-energy of the muon um, with some heavy particle in the loop. And uh, in the full theory, in general, we would then have a counter term, which looks like this. And let me 
uh, give a label. So this would be the full theory counter term, and this would be the full theory self-energy diagram of a light external particle with a loop of a heavy particle and a light loop, like muon self-energy with a Z or a Higgs in the loop. Plus counter term should be a finite result. So what happens if we apply the method of regents like we did for G minus two to this construction? So clearly in the full theory for G minus two, there was no counter term and this was finite. In general, we would have a UV divergence here and a UV divergent counter term and the sum of the two would be UV finite, right? Or not? Okay. Mm. Now let us apply the method of regions. Then we start with the full theory diagram. And uh, we didn't do that before, but let me now simply also put onto the left hand side of the equation the full theory counter term, which is of course also a Feynman diagram, even though a very simple Feynman diagram. But what happens if we apply the method of regions to uh, the loop diagram? Then uh, we have now experience with this. The loop diagram becomes a sum of two. Namely, on the one hand, we get here uh, the soft diagram, where the effective vertex here comes from a Taylor expansion of just the heavy line. Okay. We do a Taylor expansion of the heavy line with respect to its external momenta and light masses. That becomes a local vertex which goes here and then we have a loop with a light particle only. Okay, and this is an explicit EFT one loop diagram. And on the other hand, we have the hard part, um, which is just uh, this here, where that is given by the Taylor expansion of the full one loop diagram with respect to its external momenta and light mass scales. So this is a polynomial in the external momenta and masses of uh, the graph. Um, so this is what happens with the method of regions to the loop. We get a one loop diagram in the EFT with a vertex and a, a yet another vertex which is a bilinear vertex. And then this diagram doesn't do anything with method of regions. So we add just plus the full theory counter term. Then we have an equality. Now what does that mean? We see here uh, originally the sum of the two is UV finite. This has a UV divergence which is cancelled by this. Now we know applying the method of regions changes the UV behavior. So this has a different UV divergence. In general, maybe it's more divergent, like in G minus two, it became divergent. But anyway, in general, the UV divergence of this is different from the one of that. But the additional UV divergence from here is canceled by that one. And therefore, the sum of these two has the same UV divergence as the original one, and it is cancelled by this. But looking at the divergences, we can see here that here we have the explicit one loop diagram in the EFT. And uh, basically, this is divergent, and that is divergent, and the sum of the two can be regarded as a counter term diagram in the EFT which in total makes finite this EFT one loop diagram. So automatically from the matching, we also get the correct counter term Lagrangian, which in total makes finite the EFT one loop diagrams. That is the automatic consequence of the EFT matching. And so in this way, we see that it is uh, actually a very good thing that in the matching, we immediately obtain the bare Lagrangian, including the correct modifications of the ultraviolet divergences in the loops. So that is what I wanted to illustrate here. So how can we write this? Um, let's say modified 
okay, let's start here. Uh, the sum is u v finite. That has a modified u v divergence. And uh, the combination cancels the modified UV divergence. And I think that is sufficiently illustrated in this way. We can be a little bit more detailed even um, by saying that within the method of regions, of course, we have also this other interpretation that uh, the UV divergence is modified here and as a counterpart in this loop here, the infrared behavior was modified. So within the method of regions, the point of view would be uh, that the additional UV divergence of this diagram is cancelled by an additional infrared divergence of the other diagram but within the EFT, then this infrared divergence coming from here is interpreted or used as an additional contribution to the counter term. And uh, this shows again that we cannot really separate infrared and ultraviolet divergences depending on the context we treat a one over epsilon pole either as an infrared or ultraviolet divergence. So here in the method of regions, this thing initially appears as an infrared divergence, but ultimately it is used as an ultraviolet counter term to make this loop here finite. So I think I will not write this down, but um, this is how you can view all of this combination. So let me just indicate some uh, ways to organize this after L uh, bear EFT is fixed. We can write L bear EFT is equal to L EFT renormalized plus L EFT counter term. And we can use any renormalization scheme uh, for this split. So for the split of the Bayer Lagrangian into renormalized plus counter term, this split defines what we call renormalization scheme, like MS bar scheme, minimal subtraction, or on shell scheme, or something else. How we split it doesn't change the ultimate physical result of the theory, but it changes how we parameterize the result in terms of fundamental input parameters. It changes the physical meaning also of the input parameters. So can use any renormalization scheme for this split without changing physics. section 233 on renormalization schemes. Good. So for me that would be sufficient. Do you want any more details on the renormalization and counter terms like explicit Lagrangians? For me, it seems a little bit distracting. It's maybe better to visualize the general picture if you feel that you can understand this intuitively, then it would be better to leave it at that. Okay. Then we still have a little bit of time to do another detail.
Yet another very important detail of the effective field series is power counting. And so let's look at this. Our method of regions gives us a certain result. So thinking about applying method of regions or large mass expansion to obtain the EFT. So this makes clear that our EFT bare Lagrangian is in any case a sum of many, many local terms um, which can be written as follows. So we have one part of the Lagrangian which contains only operators of dimension four or less. Dimension four or less operators and by assumption In this part of the Lagrangian, there appear only light physical scales. That is the assumption that we have integrated out the heavy particles and therefore um, in this uh, part of the Lagrangian, there are no heavy scales. But then um, we obtain all these higher dimensional operators from integrating out the heavy particles and they provide terms which are suppressed by the heavy masses. So that is the outcome of the analysis using method of regions and large mass expansion. We always get these Taylor expansions of parts of the Feynman diagrams where uh, we get a polynomial of the light scales in the numerator and an appropriate uh, power of the heavy scale in the denominator to make the whole thing dimensionless or have the appropriate dimension. Therefore, um, we have here a sum, let's say sum over i, of some uh, coefficients times some operators divided by m, the heavy scale, to some power ni. And let me explain what I mean by this. So ci are dimensionless coefficients. The operators oi are operators with dimension uh, um, bigger than four operators and they are constructed out of light fields and they are derivatives. Remember derivatives uh, give uh, momenta in the Feynman rules and if we have a certain polynomial in the momenta in the Feynman rule we need a certain polynomial of derivatives in the operator in the Lagrangian. And this power ni here is automatically the correct uh, number of heavy masses in the denominator which is necessary in order to make the Lagrangian dimension 4. Therefore ni is given by the dimensionality of the operator OI minus four. And so for all these higher dimensional operators, uh, we get a mass suppression. That is the point. And by the way, that is of course strictly bigger than four. So all of the higher dimensional operators are systematically mass suppressed and the higher the dimensionality of the operator, the higher the power of the masses in the denominator becomes. And that is why the effective field theory provides a systematic, basically Taylor expansion in powers of uh, the heavy mass suppression. So um, let's just say this ratio Ci divided by M to the Ni is then the result of hard integrals like the Taylor expansion of some full one light particle irreducible diagram uh, interpreted as an operator. So and uh, just to be clear, the CI are dimensionless. 
but we have seen in the examples um, that uh, what can appear, they can be divergent, of course, as we said before, but they can also contain logarithms. Now, which logarithms can be contained in the coefficients in front of the operators in the EFT Lagrangian? Which logarithms can appear? So these coefficients are the ones obtained from the hard integrals in the method of regions where you take a full diagram, Taylor expand it such that you get a local term. Which logarithms can appear if you Taylor expand the entire diagram? So two possibilities, uh, either logarithm of the heavy scale or logarithm of the light scale. And Taylor expanding the full diagram by construction gives you a polynomial in which scale? Taylor expanding a full diagram like this. If you Taylor expand the whole thing, it's a polynomial in what? In the light scale, indeed. And then what remains in the integrand would be, for example, something like this, k square times k square minus capital mass square. That would be a typical integrand after you Taylor expand the whole diagram. So the loop momentum is used as large, the heavy mass is large. Integrating this can give poly uh, logarithms of the heavy scale. So that is the answer. The coefficients can contain, for example, ln mu square divided by the heavy mass scale. That is possible, and we have seen it already. But it cannot contain the light scales, of course, by construction, because the light scales only appear as a polynomial coefficients. So uh, this is the first thing. And therefore, we get a generic suppression of EFT diagrams. Namely, if you have a diagram with, let's say, several operators, here you have some operator OI, which couples to a few light lines. Here you have some operator OJ, which couples to a few light lines, and so on. Maybe some light vertices as well. Okay, then this diagram is suppressed automatically like one over the mass to the power ni plus nj plus and so on if you have further operators. Because each vertex produces such a suppression and this suppression cannot be compensated by anything because the heavy mass appears precisely only in this power form. It appears nowhere else. Okay, it appears in logs in the coefficient, but up to logarithms, this is the only dependence on the heavy mass, so up to ln m square. But ignoring logarithms, the power law is just given by the naive multiplication of all the different dimensionalities of the vertices. And now we can analyze what are the needed diagrams if you want to achieve a certain accuracy in your calculation. So that is then the final result for today, so let me write it down. If a certain accuracy let's say E light divided by capital M to some overall power N is desired. What do we need to do? Then, first of all, not infinitely many operators are necessary because uh, operators which uh, contribute a stronger suppression than N uh, they can never be used because any operator where this ni is bigger than n will automatically lead to a suppression which is too strong and which cannot co com be compensated by anything. Therefore, only operators are needed which or where ni is smaller or equal 
to n. So we have a prescribed accuracy goal, and then we know that only a limited number of operators are necessary, and all other operators should be neglected. Uh, and typically, this is a finite number. So this already gives a simplification. Our Lagrangian in the EFT contains a finite number of terms instead of an infinite one. And then in any diagram, of course, only combinations of operators matter where the sum of the indices is below n. So in any diagram, only combinations with ni plus nj plus and so on, smaller or equal to n matter. So, and then you know that uh, maybe you can restrict uh, the number of Feynman diagrams which contribute in a relevant way to your calculation. So, and because of this, effective field theories are predictive uh, within a certain prescribed accuracy goal. Even though they are non renormalizable. So, this is a very important result because, in principle, renormalization theory, also in the traditional old-fashioned way, would tell you if uh, you have an infinite number of terms in your Lagrangian, the theory has no predictive power. But because of the EFT power counting rules, we get predictive power. So the power counting is actually a very important part of the EFT analysis. EFT without power counting becomes meaningless, but EFT together with the power counting rules, which tells you uh, what orders um, the various operators have, this becomes a meaningful theory. All right, let us stop here and uh, then see you next time. <laughs>